In this video, we look at the three different forms of complex numbers that you, that you will encounter in your Maths IA course. And those forms are Cartesian form, which is also known as rectangular form. We covered that form in the video prior to this, Introduction to Complex Numbers. The form of that uh, is A plus BI, where A is the real components and B is the imaginary components of our complex number. The second form is polar form, which is also known as modulus argument form. And the third form is Euler form, which is also known as exponential form. But let's start by revisiting the complex number that we looked at in the Introduction to Complex Numbers video, 1 plus square root 3i, and let's plot this again on our complex plane. That'll allow us to visualize the complex number and pull out the information that we need in order to convert it to polar form. So we have z is equal to 1 plus root 3i. Uh, we talked about this in the previous video, that to plot this, we just simply go across to the corresponding value on the real uh, on the real axis, which is 1. So the real component has a value of 1. The imaginary component has a value of root 3, which as a decimal is about 0.7. So that's going to be about here, so root 3. We, we just join the dots there. That's the end point. We can represent our complex number by a vector, which originates at the origin. So let's put a straight line here. So this is our complex number here, z. Now, in, in order to convert this complex number currently a Cartesian form into polar form, we need to find two pieces of information about this complex number that we can, that's probably easiest to find by looking at the diagram. And they are the length of the complex number, which we call the modulus. So just underneath the modulus, I'll, I'll put length here, but from here on in, I'm actually gonna refer it as modulus. And we also need to find the argument, which is actually the angle that the complex number makes with the real axis. So I'm gonna call, I'm gonna write here angle, but from here on in, I'm actually gonna call it the proper word, which is the argument. But let's start with the modulus. So the modulus is the length of this vector line here, and I'm gonna represent it by this symbol here. So uh, the, the modulus of this complex number z. Now in order to find the modulus, it's fairly straightforward. We're just gonna use Pythagoras theorem. I'll create a right angle triangle in here. I know that this length here is root three and this length here is, uh, sorry, is, yep, just standard one, this length here. So my modulus will equal, just using Pythagoras theorem, will equal root three all squared plus one squared, and that will equal, uh, root three squared is three plus one, so that'll be uh, the square root of four, which is just equal to two. So my modulus, or the length of this line here, the modulus of the complex number is equal to two. The second piece of information that I need to find in order to convert a polar form is the argument, the angle. Now the angle, very similar to how circular functions worked, is always from the positive real axis in a counterclockwise direction. So that in our case here is this angle in here. Now I'm going to find this angle in radians because pretty much always, it's most common that polar form and Euler form are in radians. Sometimes you'll see it in degrees, but most common it is in radians. So this angle here, I, um, I have my two magic triangles down here in the bottom left to find the radians, uh, the angle in exact values. It, ha it has a opposite side length of root three, and an adjacent side length of one. So I can use the tan trig ratio with an opposite of root three and adjacent of one. So therefore my angle in exact values will be pi on three. So my argument here will be pi on three. So just pause that thought there. With this example here, I know that my modulus is two and my argument is root three. Let's just pause that for now. Let's now talk about the form of a complex number in polar form. That is equal to the modulus of that complex number, cis of the argument. And now I'll, I'll, uh, at the end of this video, I'll actually go through a proof as to how we get from the Cartesian form into polar form and make sense of what this cis means. Cis is actually just shorthand for cos theta plus i sine theta. So don't get too worried about seeing this three letter word that you haven't seen before. At the end of the video, I'll actually go through a proof as to what that actually means. So now that I know my length 
and my angle, I can actually do this conversion from Cartesian to polar form of our example fairly quickly. So our Cartesian form was one plus root three i. So therefore my polar form will just simply equal two cis pi on three. Now that we have found the modulus and the argument, converting to Euler form is actually very quick to go from polar form to Euler form. So I'll introduce now the form of a complex number in Euler form. That is equal to the modulus, again, multiplied by e to the power of i multiplied by the argument. So we have, the information that we need here is the modulus and the argument. We already have it for our example. So to uh, write this out, it's actually fairly quick. I can just substitute those values straight in. So it'll be two e to the i multiplied by pi on three. Now you may be wondering, well, what's the point of converting between the three? And it's a, it's a very valid question. You're probably comfortable with rectangular form. It's very easy to visualize it on a complex plane. You're probably wondering why do we need to go to using cis and e? The answer to that question will probably come to light in the next video, which is all about doing operations of complex numbers. And you'll see that different forms lend itself well to different operations. So for example, addition and subtraction of complex numbers are, are very easy using Cartesian form. However, multiplication, division, and especially powers, very, very easy using polar form and Euler form, but become very difficult using Cartesian form. So it's very useful to know how to convert between the three and, a, and, and use a particular form for a, for a particular operation. But I'll go into that in more detail in the next video. So we have covered there the three different forms of complex numbers. I just wanna finish this video now with a quick proof as to how we went from Cartesian form to polar form. However, I won't do the proof to go from polar form to Euler form. It's actually quite complex and outside the scope of the AI course. It involves some calculus, which is actually not in the course. So I won't do this proof from polar to Euler. You'll just have to believe me on this one or just believe the textbook on this one. But I think it's quite an intuitive proof to go from Cartesian form to polar form. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, I have quadrant one here of a complex plane. Let's just draw a complex number onto this complex plane. So let's just draw one out to here. Let's call this complex number W for now. So this here will be the modulus of the complex number W and this will be the argument. So this in Cartesian form, this particular complex number can be written as A plus BI where the A value is the corresponding length of the real component. So that'll be this length here. And the B will be the corresponding imaginary component length. That'll be this length here. And now I've created a little uh, right hand, uh, right angle triangle. Now off to the left hand side here, let's just, let's just apply a little bit of basic trigonometry to our angle here. I wanna focus on cos theta and sine theta. So let's apply cos theta first to this angle here. So if we, if we apply cos theta, now cos is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, so that'll equal the side length A over the hypotenuse, which is the modulus of the complex number W. Let's now multiply both sides by the modulus of W. So we will get A is equal to the modulus of W cos theta. If we did the same process for sine theta, we would actually get this result. B is equal to the modulus of W sine theta. So now that we have these two expressions, an expression for A and B in terms of cos theta, sine theta, and the modulus of W, I can go back to my Cartesian form um, of my complex number here. And instead of writing A plus B I, I'm gonna substitute in what A and B are equal to. So this will equal my A value, which is the modulus of W cos theta, plus my B value is the modulus of W sine theta, and my I on the end there. Now from here, I'm gonna factor out a common factor in these two um, expressions here, which is the modulus of W. So if I factor that out, sorry, out of the two terms, not expressions. So I will get the modulus of W, open up a bracket, cos theta plus, and we usually write the I in front of the sine theta. So it'll be plus I sine theta. Now, 
it'll get annoying over time to continue writing cos theta plus i sine theta. So we have a shorthand way of writing cos theta plus i sine theta, and that's what we call cis theta. The cis being the c being for the cos, the i being for the i, and the, and the s being for the sine. So this is equal to cis theta. So you can see there how we went from Cartesian form, a very quick proof, down into polar form, the modulus, cis, and the argument. Okay, so that concludes our video on the three different forms of complex numbers.